Hi, my name is Kurt Asplund and this is my studio. Over the weekend we were doing some cleaning up and I found this ship in a bottle. Kind of reminds me of the ocean, which reminded me of fish in the ocean, which reminded me of sharks in the ocean. I think it's time that we draw a little shark and some pirate's gold. Are you with me? Come on, matey. Let's set sail. All right, let's get started. We're gonna start with our treasure chest and we're going to start with the back end of it. So you want to have a diagonal line and then we're going to draw another line. It's also going to be diagonal. So it's like a giant L. And then we're going to finish this off to create this rectangle that's in space. At each of the corners of this rectangle, we're going to extend four straight lines. And you, not only are they straight, but they're the same height. Once we have those done, we're going to connect the outsides of them and now the insides. So you end up with a, a cube, but this is a, like a rectangle cube. On one end, we want to add a rainbow shape or a curve and then the same thing on the other end. And then a line across the top. So this is our basic framework for our treasure chest. And you want to make sure that you draw lightly. Whoa! Hey, if you're liking this video, make sure you subscribe right now below so I can keep making more. You got this. Okay, let's get our shark in now. We're going to start off with this diagonal line that is just above the uh, treasure chest. And I'm circling around to create his nose, which leads into kind of his smile. Now this is the underside of him. So he's, we're gonna draw right on top of the treasure chest. And we're gonna curve it all the way around to get his tail, his back tail. Again, I always say, Keep things light because we're going to come in much darker. All right, the tail. Make sure the top of the tail is a little bit longer and, and uh, uh, thinner than the bottom part, than the bottom part of the tail. I noticed that on sharks, that they, the top part of their tail is a little bit longer than underneath. I've added his eye in and the rest of his tail in the back. I'm actually adding a second eye in. Now let's move on to his top fin. Yeah, that's gonna definitely be a nice big old shark fin there. And his side fins. This, I believe his side fins help him to swim up and down. Let's add some gills. Make sure you curve these gills. The gills will help define the surface of the side of the shark. Let's get some teeth in, adding some, some teeth going up and some teeth going down. If you start to follow, fall behind, just pause the video and then you can keep, keep drawing to get caught up. Yep, just redefining, redefining some of the lines on my shark here. Let's go ahead and get some of the coral that's in the foreground. That's, when I say the word foreground, that means objects that are closer to the viewer. So we're gonna start with a rather large circle, a smaller circle in front, 
and then another circle behind. All right, we're gonna add some more circles here, all overlapping one another. A big one in back and two in front. So you can see by these shapes, we're using overlap to give a sense that uh, one shape is in front of the other. All right, we're gonna add some rocks underneath by creating these little squiggles. Now let's go to the back right hand corner of our drawing and add some seaweed way in the background. So I start off with a, a horizontal line and now I'm just making some very light squiggles. It's really important that we keep this back area light. Just hold your pencil lightly. Don't push down as hard. And that's a, that's a really good skill to possess as an artist, to be able to push your pencil down hard and to pull it up so you could create some really interesting line work by pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. And that's pushing down on the paper and pulling up on the paper. Drawing heavy, drawing light. Okay, in the bottom right, I've added some shapes now. We have a triangle. Uh, we have a couple triangles actually, and two round, round shapes. These are gonna become a uh, shell and a little lobster or a crustacean. So this whole part of our drawing is, is what would be called the under drawing. This gives us guidelines, just like if you were, just like your skeleton of your body or if you're building a house, you would have uh, um, all your wooden under, under part of your house. All right, let's move over to the eye of the shark. Let's start darkening some lines here. So we're gonna darken in his, his eye. Yeah, let's get his other eye in as well. All right, starting to work on his smile here. Sweeping, trying to make a nice smooth curve coming around. Yep, I'm gonna stop just short of that top fin of his. At the same time, I'm revisiting some of these lines and darkening them in. There's some of his teeth now. Yep, adding his teeth, top and bottom. Adding some nostrils for him to breathe on his nose. And now the underside. And I'm gonna make sure this is a nice thick line, but I wanna stop short of that fin. So I wanna draw that fin. And I'm gonna circle around the back here. get that I think it's called a dorsal fin if I'm if I'm wrong comment give me a comment tell me tell me what these fins are called if you know what they're called I'm not really a shark expert I can draw them I just don't know a lot about them okay so the top of his body I've made sure is a straight is a straight line this this will cause interest by having straight versus curve so we got some nice curves for his uh, gills coming through. And the back side of his body. Again, the underside of his tail is shorter than the top side. Another small fin in the back there. And I'm just gonna circle, circle around and have it match up. Oh, look at this. I, I'm not too satisfied with that last little curve I made, but I'm just gonna draw right on top of it and uh, we're gonna leave it in place and that will add some character to my drawings. 
So you can see even even I don't hit my lines perfectly. But that's okay. I think that gives drawings a lot of life. Okay, moving on now, let's let's get some of this uh, treasure chest in. Thick line on the bottom, going around the side there. Getting in the top. front end where it opens I guess that's where the treasure might be inside this chest this is gonna be a lock let's let's add a little lock here at the bottom that's where you might put the key in All right, I'm just going to redefine this lock, give it a little bit of weight there. Let's get the straps that go over the top of this chest. Make sure that you're following the surface so they have a slight curve to them. Yep, one on the right side. And then when it gets to the lower part, it goes straight down. This follows the surface. It creates a three-dimensional form when we add these surface lines. Right, I'm going to get some little corner things here in the corner of the chest like little sometimes you might see them they're little pieces of metal that help to keep the corners from breaking up and I'm going to draw just a little skull on the side of it there it's just a round little head two eyes and some teeth Let's go ahead and work on some of this coral now that's in front of our drawing. These first three pieces are going to be nice and round with kind of a squiggly pattern on the inside. Here we go. Just get some squigglies, like a, almost like a snake was going across the top of them. And draw it slowly. So you could kind of follow the, the squiggle pattern. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Just make sure that your lines are squiggly. What this does is this is creating texture. So on these three objects, you get with these squiggly lines, we're creating texture. And that creates interest because on each of the different objects, we might have a different texture. So on this coral, you get a sense that, wow, this is organic and there, it could have a hard surface to it, which is, which is different than what we have on top of the chest or the sea floor. So I'm gonna add squiggles to all three of these shapes. These three volumes that will give a sense that this coral, coral is growing right in front of us. Now the other three in the back behind that, I'm making more leafy shape like giant leaves. So I've started with one single line in the middle to create a vein and branching that off. And now I'm doing the same for the other two. So you get this really nice contrast with the coral in front to this leafy pattern behind that. And that always adds interest to a drawing. And working on the bottom area there just a little bit, a little squiggle down here. It could be rocks, it could be something in the sand adding a little thickness 
by adding a double line. Adding some dots, small dots on the ground, almost it gives a sense that this is sand, little bits of sand, pieces of sand. All right, let's work on this shell here that's in front of the uh, um, treasure chest. And you can see what I've done. I've just made like S small curves and they just keep getting smaller and smaller until the front end I've done like a, almost like a question mark on the side and now right next to that shell we're gonna put our little crustacean drawing like the claws his claws and a little zigzag line inside each one of these ovals a little zigzag down the outside and there's what his claws might look like couple eyes and let's work on his back or his tail area again just a series of smaller shapes and then putting his tail in the back Again, adding some different sort of texture to his surface. Maybe they're little dots. All right, let's get that seaweed in the background here now. Nice S curves going up. Just drawing and enjoying them. Just thinking of these things waving in the sea, in the salt water. Squiggly lines. This, this here could be a kelp forest. Whoever thought that you would have a forest that grows underwater? Well, a lot of times you have a lot of kelp that does that. And I'm going to add, just add a few more squiggles and then add some little small ovos, ovals to in, indicate like the paddles. I know that's, they're not what, that's not what they're called, but like the leaves that are on the kelp in the background. Adding some squiggles now and some lines to the uh, sandy area. Adding some surface lines to the side of our treasure chest. This has a sense of wood and it's flat. That looks a great contrast with that shell right next to it. And then in the background, I'm just going to just freehand uh, some other fish, maybe some other sharks. And I'm not gonna give a lot of detail, I'm just going to draw the outline or silhouette that means the shadow the shape that that is casting or creating and silhouettes are great to use when you draw so this back this other shark I'm drawing in the distance here is me maybe a hammerhead shark I think y'all did a very good job. I'm sure these look excellent. All right, we'll keep on drawing.